Oh, hello. Hi. Didn't see you there. I'm Ann Richmond, your community manager here at Active Player Network, and I have brought another friend to play with me today. Hello, I'm Dave Milo. I'm a teacher in New York City Public Schools, and I also am a performer and a good friend of Ann's. Yeah, one thing that I have learned in playing Dungeons and Dragons with Dave is mm -hmm. that he loves monsters. I do love monsters. I especially love dragons. Dragons. And they're close cousins. Dragons. <laughs> what we're going to do is go into the Monster Menagerie 3 boxes from WizKids. Now, there are lots of different options that you can get. In each of these boxes, there are four different figures. And we're also going to open my personal favorite, the Kraken. The, or as it is known in our game, the Crack. That's Sometimes. A whole other story. We'll get into that <laughs> some other time. All right, everybody, it's time to dig into Monster Menagerie 3. Ow! Cracra! First, we have to look at this incredible box. I don't know, Anne. You want to leave that to I last? Think we should wait a bit before we crack this open. Welcome to hell, everybody. Yeah. What's okay. in there? What's in there? Oh. Okay, oh so my goodness. We have a Lady Hill Giant. Is it a Lady Hill Giant? Yeah. I didn't know. Oh, it is a Lady Hill Giant. Which is cool. Equality. Oh, look <gasps> at him. He's so cute. He's so cute. It's a Whittle Goblin. It's a little goblin. He looks like a sorcerer or something. A gibbering mouther. Is um, it gibbering? Gibbering, gibbering. Listen, I'm You tell us in the comments. Yeah. This is a mud method. <laughs> Methods I feel are underused. Remember, giants. Why is this, why does it always have to be giants? It why does because we're playing Storm King's Thunder. <laughs> this is a frost giant. Knew it. Like our good friend Harshnag. Yeah. No spoilers. We have what appears to be a Baybarian, as I call a them. Ba a Baybarian? It's a Barbarian. Oh, that makes but it, more sense. Actually, honestly, it says this is a nameless one, so. A nameless one, you say? Yeah. Take a look at that. Mm. This guy, though. Uh, well, he's this got guy. Speeders. This guy. He's got Speeders. That's true. Try drone. Try, try drone. I don't like it. That's what I know. It's creepy. <gasps> AF. This is. I knew it was some kind of wear. Oh. But this is well, a. Lycanthropes. A wear boar. Ah, uh, wear. Which seems. So if you haven't flipped through a lot of the stat blocks for the wear creatures, it's really cool because they all have their own little difference. Right. Like wear rats versus wear boars, and also the classic wear wolf. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to love, y'all. Some werewolves. Now, one of the cool things about Wiz Kids is they know that you might get the same mini twice in these black boxes. So one of the things they do is they kind of paint them all a little bit different. So if you get two werebores, which you might need in a werebore encounter, um, you, they might not look exactly the same. Right. Well, and I think your army is slightly stronger than mine. We don't really know what yeah. that tri-drone does, but I'm willing to bet it's probably more powerful than a little tiny goblin. I mean, torch. tell us in the comments. I'm hoping nothing nothing against Lady Hill Giant here, but I'm hoping I get some, some a little more know, sophisticated. Sophisticated? But just Are you Team powerful. Hill Giant? Are you Team Frost Giant? Boy! This is exactly what you were talking about, right? Because we have two frost giants here. But they're a little bit different. But they're a little different. This one's wielding like a cool gladius. Swood. As opposed to And the also the, the um the different things are uh they're painted a little differently too, mm -hmm. right? So you can see you have like a more cool gray on his tunic here and more of a warm gray here. This is a character Anne would probably play. How dare you? It's a tiny thing. It looks like it wields a staff. Yeah. Um, and uh, she's cute. So I think this is definitely an Anne character. This yeah. is very close to what Farrah looked like. Farrah's my druid. Before, uh, the, before thunder took the thunder over. took over. So this is a gnome wizard. Or, you know, we can go with this badass gnome. Gnomes are no joke. Not only do they have the demonic influence from their demonic hyena overlord, but they got frenzy, a rampage rather. Oh, they can do a lot they of damage. They can do a lot of damage. And real they're fast just terrifying because they sound like hyenas as they close in on you. But it's a Kotoa. A Kotoa? Kotoa. Isn't this the guy in the book that's like, meh? Yeah. yeah. Don't these guys play a bigger role in the Underdark? Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're very big in the Underdark. Yeah. They're, they're the insane fish people that worship anything as a god. They, and they live in... This one. Blibdiboop. This is in uh, Out of the Abyss or Rage of Demons. Everything in, in the Kuatoa, Kuatoa 
Oh my gosh, the internet is going to kill us. I know. Um, Be kill sure us to in tell the us in the comment section <laughs> how badly we screwed up the pronunciation. Everything about their um, culture people. is like fish people, right. and it sounds like bubbles. This says it's an Empyrean. Oh. So it is a giant creature, very large. But this yeah. is a titan, actually. Yeah. So this is a celestial. Very, I like, I like these. These are very Greek. He has a really cool mace, right? That's a maul. A maul. So this is a human bard with a giant chain pickaxe. Whoa. This is a gazer, and it's like a teeny tiny little beholder for a thing. Oh, Look it's so it. cute. So this is a tiefling rogue. Ooh. And I love tieflings and kind of want to play one next because I have to be extra. If I'm not small, then I have to be a horned demon thing. I have really enjoyed Volo's Guide to Monsters. It's one of my favorites. Or is that the one that I'm thinking of? I think it is. Because it has this entry in it, which is a goblin hucker. Just looking at this and playing with this on the table where you have this, I'm gonna assume, It ogre. makes everybody go, oh. Right. And you see the goblin sitting on his shoulder and yeah. in the bucket here. That's which, so cool. It's really neat and I really wanna play this. There we go. Classic Dave Milo. Two wolves for the price of one. Wow, that's, what are these? Are they called, what are they called? Are they like a Cerberus? What do they that's call these? probably a hellhound. A death dog. A death dog. It's another werebore. Now let's have a look at them so you can see that so they're painted a little bit differently. this werebore has a wooden, well, wooden hammer or right? maul, and that yours this one has, has an, an axe. axe. And they're like a little bit different. So if you want to have your were army, again, it's not a big deal. You just open a bunch of boxes and you get slightly different little things. Yeah, and then it's just a question of where you're going to put it. Oh my god. What's oh it going to take to get you into a nice frost giant today? Um, I'm going to choose to not tell our DM about how many frost giants we now have in the miniature arsenal. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh, I see a thing. It's got some wings on it. Oh. It looks like a box with a, with a bow. Oh, cool. Look at him. Oh, it looks like a box with a bow. I was confused as to what you were talking about. Not like a Christmas box. Right. I this it was is a, a quadrone. Mm -hmm. I now have a knoll as well. Oh, I like that knoll better because I, I tend to like dual wielding short swords. That's pretty pretty That's, cool. Whereas flails are hard to use. I have a whittle thing. You have a, I think. I, I think, think I know what it is. I know what that is as well. I believe it's a gnome wizard. Yeah, mine is so cool and she There's looks like she's sassy. Oh wow, and she's oh, she's it's on like a torch. casting a fireball. Yeah, she's got so all in the battle flame. of the gnomes. I mean, who are you gonna go with? Uh, I'm gonna go with the one with the staff and the dagger because because uh, it's the one you opened. Yeah. But the one that I'm going with because she's a winner. No, I think this is shows versatility. Lexi Lou, the gnome wizard. Versatility. Mouth of Grolantor. So if I could venture a guess. He uses his mouth. No, he is the mouth. This I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume this is, I guess we're back to Team Hill Giant. This is a hill giant, but it's one of the specialized hill giants that you can find in Volo's Guide to Monsters. This is a vampire spawn. Vampire. Vampire. If you're running a Strahd, Curse of Strahd, yeah. that would be good. That'd be useful. And then we have another. I mean, there's so many different <gasps> things here. You could really use it for. My one of my favorite and almost never used monstrous races, kobolds. Oh, so cute! Because they're little dragon people. Ugh, little dragon people. Always so good. Little dragons. I like dragons and wolves, guys. Oh, this. Look at so, this hat. I, I'm, I'm, this is all in about Volo's Guide yeah. to Monsters. So this, it's a Nilbog. What does that mean? Say it backwards. Nilbog. Nilbog. Ba. Don't don't switch the syllables. <laughs> not, not, Wait. Don't, they're not switching the syllables. Nilbog. Nilbog. N I L. Ba. Wait. Neil. B O G. Goblin. Goblin. 
That took way longer. <laughs> We'll cut it out, we'll cut it. We'll fix it in post, we'll fix it in post. So with the goblinoids, the Nilbog is a trickster goblin. And it's kind of like the way that the goblins keep the balance with the hobgoblins and bugbears. This is a trickster spirit that possesses a goblin and then will cause all sorts of chaos, but it's like immortal. Dave Milo. That's probably what we're gonna end up fighting, yep. Cause that is a fire giant with two like 20 to 30 foot tall spiked tower shield. This is another one of these uh, blip of the blips. Uh, what are they? Kuotoa. Kuotoa. Yeah, Kuotoa. So you have one of the ones that is carrying their their trademark uh, forked staves, yeah. um, whereas mine a has a whip. A whip. A whip. You want me to tell you what it is? Yeah, you guess. I'll tell you if you're right. Uh, that is a winged kobold. It is a winged kobold. I'm really terrified. Like, the thing is, I play and watch a lot of D&D, but I do not have an encyclopedic knowledge like you do. I am an aspiring DM that never gets the chance to DM. So I yeah. just read the monster you just read them over, over and over and over. And over. <laughs> but we also fought these against, uh, against these guys in Rise of Tiamat, which I think is where they're yeah. from. Oh, what the... Front door. Uh, this guy is terrifying. He has bug parts. I don't. I don't. I know what that thing is. I think, but I can't. It's remember a. Its, it's name. a mesoloth. Yeah. This looks very underdark esque. No, that would be some sort of fiend. There's something here that could really tip the scales, Dave. That I haven't told you about. What's that? We've both opened four boxes. Uh huh. But the thing is, Whiz Kids, in their infinite knowledge, sent me a tiebreaker. They did. They sent me a ninth box. They sent you a ninth box. Yeah. This is a blind box battle. Okay. Well, what... As previously stated by me, and by previously, I mean just now. Okay. But anything could be in there, right, Anne? Anything could be you in there. You could have another Titan in there, right? Yeah. So I think we need to we need to make a deal. Okay. We'll roll for that box. Yeah. And whoever doesn't get that box gets the other one. Put that in the hook. In the army. Yeah. But the other... Bo oh. So, the Could other box is a, is a Kraken plus, like, some boats. You love boats. I do love boats. Okay, let's do it. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, you roll first. That, that is a two. That is a two. So, it looks like Little Orphan Annie's. Looks like I'm going to get that Kraken is what that sounds like. Oh, that was almost a one. But it's a 19. No, 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 19. All right, so womp, I'm womp, fine. Womp. Oh, no. It's a Cyclops, everybody. Well, technically. Well, technically. Well, actually. Cyclopians are a giant type. Right, but this is a Cyclops. It is a Cyclops. Put that over here with my with my best boys, my frost bros. Ooh, look at this! It's like a fleshy flying that? thing. A sturge. Oh, sturges. They're annoying. Okay, so I think we have another vampire. Vampire spawn? Vampire spawn. So we're spawn for spawn. Mm -hmm. This is a sea spawn. A sea spawn? Which is gonna go real well with oh. taking down your kraken. Oh, it's gigantic! It is huge. Oh my the gosh, box, I'm so the happy. The box does not do it justice. Good God, Yo. Anne, why don't you get started on that bag while I- I get to open the I boats! Fight. You got to open the boats. I love boats. This is like the coolest miniature I've ever opened and I'm really scared. Just wanna point out, ladies and gentlemen, I have a, um, what is essentially an end boss for a campaign in my hands. Can we and talk Farrah about- And over here is freaking out about how cool the boat mini is. It comes with its own oars! Well, you didn't say that. <laughs> now I understand. Holy moly. <gasps> That's so cool. Oh, it's so wicked. <laughs> I really like the, the wave and the splash because it really brings to life what this Kraken will be doing yeah. all the time, which will be popping in and out all over the map. 
a lot of people when they're just starting out don't have all the resources and that's fine. That's where WizKids comes in, right? To really build out the look of the table. And so when you're able to do that at last and then you finally see the scale of how big you are versus how big the thing you're fighting is, like it really brings some intensity to the battle. There are going to be in total in this box six tentacles for you to use in your Kraken fight. Stop like Errol flinting his tentacle beard, you weirdo. <laughs> oh my gosh, what else is in there? There are little aquatic knickknacks that I'm sure you would enjoy. And a beach, it's a sandbar. It's a sandbar. That way that people, people don't have to be in the boat to fight him. And on that sandbar, you can put your little um, undead uh, helmsman. And then our last piece, a treasure, a treasure chest. chest. And look, the top <gasps> it comes opens. off and there's gold inside. Well, Dave, we better go um, prepare for what is likely our imminent demise. Yeah, you're not showing this to Chris, right? Um, no, our DM will not know what lies beneath the waves in the Active Player Network studio. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in. It has been awesome opening up these blind boxes with you guys. We can't wait to see you back here next time on Active Player Network. Wait, let me bring the Kraken back so that he can wave goodbye. You're welcome back anytime, Dave. Thanks for joining us here on Active Player Network. If you liked the video, please go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash activeplayernetwork. Make sure you don't miss out on blogs, vlogs, and giveaways by heading over to our Facebook fan page, facebook.com slash activeplayernetwork, and hitting the like button. Join our discussions on Twitter at activeplayernet, and follow our antics on Instagram at activeplayernetwork. Play on.